Good morning guys, just a quick one really, just to tell you what I've bought for the Mercedes ML500. Um, got a few little toys to go in there just to try and bring it up to date a little bit. Um, first of all, starting, well mainly with this uh, Pioneer SPH Evo 93 DAB. That's a 9 inch floating panel screen and I'm hoping to well, for one, bring it up to date a little bit with Apple CarPlay, Amazon Alexa, so on and so forth. So um, that will bring the, the uh, infotainment system right bang up to date. Uh, wireless connectivity, obviously, for everything, Bluetooth, music, whatever. And that should be really good. Looking forward to getting that in there. And I'm hoping to achieve a look like the more modern Mercedes where they've got a, a kind of floating panel um, stuck up on the top of the dashboard there. But we'll see how that goes. Um, this kit here, this um, Uni Evo.006, is the kit you need to make this into a floating panel, which is a little bit of a con, really, I think, considering this um, stereo was about £750 or something. I then had to spend another £150 on this Uni kit. Uh, which will allow me to have the, the, the uh, stereo as a floating panel, which means you can move it up and down and tilt it backwards and forwards and bring it out from the dash a little bit, should you need to. Uh, so that was another £150, so we're £900 in just with those two. And then, quite excited about this, this Audison um, APBX10. Now this is an active subwoofer um, with an 800 watt peak um, power on it and the thing I liked about this little Alderson sub is one it's small it's compact uh, and two it can be positioned down firing so you can have it turned upside down which will allow me to stack stuff on top of it in the boot which means it will take up a minimal amount of space and I won't have to worry about putting stuff on on top of it when it's not in use which is a fantastic idea comes with this quick release plug um, which means you can take it out of the boot easily when you need to, which is a really good feature. Uh, so I'm looking forward to, well, I'm looking forward to hearing it. First of all, I think it should sound great with this head unit. It should certainly be a marked improvement on the um, crappy Harman Kardon system that's in there at the moment, which is just rattling the doors, really. Um, also, on top of that, I've bought this little Garmin Mini. I had one of these before, um, this little Garmin Mini dash. I don't know if you can see that, Garmin Mini 2 um, dash. The first ones had trouble with overheating. But I've had one of these before, and it, it gave a, a great picture. Um, I highly recommend that. It came uh, with a, a really uh, friendly user interface. It's good to, easy to use, easy, easy to find your footage. Um, and just a really a nice little discreet package that will just sit up out of the way uh, behind your, your rear view mirror there, which is a, another good thing. Um, so there's just a few things that are going to go in this Mercedes ML. Um, I hope you'll stick around. I should be able to get these installed pretty quickly. And uh, perhaps even later on in this video, you'll see all of this installed. And uh, we'll see what it turns out like. Wish me luck, guys. I've never done this before. I'm no radio fitter, so I'm not going to bore you with the installation. But if I do come across any hard things, I'll, I'll point them out. And, and uh, maybe there are plenty of installation videos on YouTube uh, for the Mercedes ML. Plenty of people have been putting these bog standard, um, you know, uh, nine inch screens, uh, flush mounted uh, screens in there. But I wanted something a little bit different. Uh, that's why I've gone for this one. But you make your own minds up. I'd like to hear your comments on it anyway. So, yeah, leave this with me and we'll get back to you a little bit later on. See you soon. Hi, guys. Thanks for joining me again. Well, as you can see, we managed to get the stereo inside the car now. Um, there's just a little few things I want to point out. Uh, obviously, I'm not going to bore you with the installation. There's plenty more more qualified people out there than me for the for the installation but i will give you a few little pointers as to how we done it if you can see down here you've got the small ashtray at the bottom on the ml there's two um torx 20 screws either either side of this you basically just pull this ashtray undo them pull this ashtray out gently turn it upside down and then there's a plug on the bottom for obviously for the cigarette lighter undo that plug and then you just maneuver this out put it to one side and then you pull the hvac panel off 
Um, lots of people online I noticed were doing it with those plastic spudgers and but I, ju I just literally gave it a, a yank from the bottom there and it just popped up it was kind of up and, and out three plugs on the back of that um, you just undo those three plugs and again put that to one side uh, just below the what would be your old command system there's uh, two little sliding screws either side here with Torx 20 screws in undo those and then you slide down the clips that are behind here and then the whole command system just falls out now one thing i will say is that i i had the harman kardon system in this car and there there was a there was a, um a, a, an iPod connecting cable that come through you know for the old iPods that people had there was a, a an iPod cable in here so that you could plug your your iPod in and looking at the wiring that was behind this um, system I was a little bit confused as to why it you know why it wasn't able to plug straight into the new harness that I'd bought and the reason for that was is that as you can imagine uh, this is the cable that would have this is the cable that would have connected to your iPod and gone from behind the stereo through into the glove compartment here and then you would have plugged in your iPod down here. Well, all of this was connected to the vehicle's harness and it took me a little while because it was all cable tied together and, and in with the, the vehicle's uh, harness, it took me a little while to figure it out that I didn't actually need this. So if you've got the Harman Kardon system, guys, I strongly recommend that you just literally unclip these cable ties, anything to do with this iPod system, and just take the whole thing out, because this is a, a, a kind of an afterthought. This is something that somebody would have paid extra for at the factory when they ordered the car. It would have been an optional extra, and this harness is part of that optional extra. Uh, with the iPod interface on there from Mercedes, the original part for them. So if you're putting in your own aftermarket system, remember to take all of this out first. So getting back to the stereo, as you can see, um, I've achieved the floating panel look that I was uh, looking for. Uh, at the moment, we've got Apple CarPlay on there. You've got the, your songs that are on there. I won't play any, obviously. You've got your maps on there, Waze, Google Maps, Apple Maps, um, everything. All of that works perfectly. Um, I did have a little bit of trouble in the beginning. They sent me a dodgy GPS aerial with the car, so the, the, the car thought it was in a, a different location, and that threw me for a little while. I thought we'd done something wrong. But it turns out it was just a new GPS aerial. I don't know if you can see that die up there, up the top there. Can you get up to see that? We, we've just mounted it right up the top there in the dash, um, on top of the dash there. It's nice and square in the middle of the window. And that's our GPS aerial. And now that we put the, the new one in, it all works absolutely perfectly and seamlessly. No problem at all. Um, while I had this in here, of course there's other options to add something else to it. So I had the idea that I would maybe be able to add a fire, fire stick, uh, an Amazon fire stick to it. And, and, I, and I did successfully do that. I'm quite pleased with how that turned out. Because it's got a HDMI port on the back of the stereo, you can actually um, go into the, the, um, um, the Amazon... Uh, fire tv and of course when you're in there of course you can have netflix amazon prime and I, I, you know i've just signed into them i've got my little remote here i've just signed into those uh, services um you can come down here as you can see there just go back up uh, what is that i've uh, netflix click on netflix and it should just open up and you, you'll be able to play. I won't play any content, but as you can see, it's over. This is a bowling ball, and this is a kick. Just turn that down. Uh, so yeah, as you can see, that all works seamlessly as well. Um, you can come out of that, um, go back to the home screen. Again, remember, you're just using your remote control that you normally would 
on your on your Amazon Fire TV at home. But the other interesting thing about this, of course, if you've got ring cameras indoors, I find this amazing. It, it suddenly dawned on me that I may be able to control those ring cameras. And sure enough, guys, check this out. Show me the drive. And there you go. That is actually my drive. That is the car. I can, uh, can prove it by waving my hand out the window. You see me there waving? <laughs> That's actually me waving in from the car there. And as you can see, that, that works perfectly. It's a great, that's a great asset for me. I mean, I can put my lights on as well when I'm coming home. I could just call it up on this and so show me the drive and be able to put the lights on. Uh, that's amazing. Show me the, oh, no, it's not that one. Sorry, you have to back out of that now, first of all. Uh, it's not like when you're indoors. Show me the front door. Bear with me a second. It's just a little bit slow because of the internet connection. We're only working off of, uh, piggybacking off of uh, uh, a phone here. But as you can see, that's my front door. Um, my, my ring uh, doorbell. You can see, again, I'll put my window down. You'll be able to see that that's actually me there waving. See that? We're actually live view. And that all works perfectly as well. Um, I'll come back out of that. Again, with this as well, because it's an Amazon Fire Stick, I can actually talk to somebody that's on my drive as well, just using this little remote control. I mean, it really, really is a clever little system. Now that the Amazon Fire TV is, is on there, it really is a clever system. It, it's worked out perfectly. Um, of course, there's there's other stuff on there that you can go to. You've got your BBC iPlayer, your Netflix, your Amazon, uh, YouTube. I mean, it's great to have YouTube on the car. I've signed in there. I mean, as you see by this, you should be able to play one of my videos. We'll just pull up that. Go over to my library. And then my videos and then as you can see just play one of these a minute and you'll see that all that works as well perfectly but these are actually my videos on my youtube channel um, and the quality of the picture is absolutely fantastic it's just as good as if you was indoors i, I think and being on a, a nine inch screen like that i mean it, it really is worth watching you can watch live tv on this as well if you manage to download the uh the thing which i'm going to try and do later on and another thing i'm going to try later on I may be able to try it later on i've had an idea that if you're using your drone i may be able to cast the image from the drone you from my smart controller on the drone may be able to cast the image to this so if you're driving along uh, say for instance you're doing some aerial footage of your car while you're driving along I mean, it may be a, a really good idea to be able to, you know, put your controller down and at least you'd be able to glance on the screen while you're driving to see if the drone is following you. I mean, that's going to be great. I'll include that. If I manage to do that later on, I'll include that footage and, and let you see how that goes. But as you can see, guys, that all works perfectly. And um, I don't suggest, by the way, with just a little uh, caveat there, I don't, I don't suggest that you watch videos while you're driving. Uh, that wouldn't be a good idea it's not safe and i don't recommend it but i'm just showing you for the purposes of this video it's all working really really good and i'm absolutely chuffed to bits with it i mean i couldn't ask for any more I've, i think i've achieved what i wanted to achieve and this car now i think has been brought up to 21st century it had a terrible old uh, command system in it uh, the bluetooth was atrocious you couldn't bluetooth any music you could maybe take a call on the on the handset on your handset um 
but other than that it was useless you couldn't get any music on there but now this is just absolutely phenomenal apple carplay just works seamlessly uh, with all the maps and and everything and it's just absolutely awesome i absolutely love it as you can see it's a nice big map and um just absolutely awesome so i'm gonna uh, oh one other thing before i go i just wanted to uh show you as well we we let me have the camera guys sorry guys bear with me i'm just going to show you there was um you've got a, a microphone there which is how i can call up siri if i need to or take calls so we wired that all in nice and neat and it's in a good spot there uh, we've got the Garmin dash cam that I told you about. He's mounted up there, nice and out the way, no wires hanging down. Uh, all the wires are hidden and he's working perfectly, not in the way. And up here, you'll see I have a DAB aerial. And this one was a nice easy one. It was just a stick on the window one. You didn't have to file away any of your paintwork to get an earth or anything and uh, this one went in really nicely all the wires have been hidden away nicely as i say there's that little gps aerial that i was telling you about just nice and neat there and uh and that's it so yeah what we'll do guys we'll uh we'll end it there this video i hope that's been helpful i hope you've enjoyed it i would love to hear your comments on this uh, if you if you think it's worked out okay please let me know if you don't like it let me know as well i'd love to hear all of your comments and um, I'll go back, we're going to grab the drone and we'll, we'll go somewhere where we can film safely and, um, and hopefully I'll be able to add that footage onto the back of this because I'm pretty sure I'll be able to cast the image from my smart controller onto this system using the fire stick and if that works that'd be pretty trick. So stick with me guys, we'll see if I can add that for you in a bit. Speak to you soon. Hi guys, so we're doing a little bit of a review on the thing on the uh, radio today and uh, just wanted to show you some other features of the radio that we think are quite relevant to videographers, filmmakers, all you guys out there that like taking pictures of your car. As you can see here, I've got my Mavic uh, 2 uh, drone here and um, what I'm going to try and do, I'm going to try and follow the car, but I'm going to show you something interesting that I've managed to do on my vehicle um, on the radio that we installed in the car. So we're just going to take off here a minute. Let's see if we can take yeah, off. No. Take off. The home point has been updated. Please check it on the map. Okay, so if you have a look on there, you can see the, the drone was on the top of the car. Okay, and then if you have a look on here, back up a little bit, Don. If you have a look on there, you can see that that is the actual image from the drone. And if I point the, the camera down, you'll see that that's us there if I go back a little bit and then point the camera up you can see that we're there and then what I want to do is do a bit of active track and then we want to there's the there's the car now this this might be useful to you guys because imagine that you're out filming with your car and you you've got this controller in your hand you don't want to hold this but you've got this stereo set up in the car so what i'm going to do now i'm just going to i'm going to record this so that it's recording i'm going to leave that up there imagine imagine that you were you know doing your filming and i'm going to drive along now and see if the the uh 
I'll be able to see on my stereo that the, the drone is actually following me. Which as you can see, it is following me perfectly. And being able to see it on the screen like this is, is fantastic. It's a, it's a great way to just be able to glance down and make sure that the drone is still following you. Now, I've managed to do that purely by casting it like mirroring the image from my uh, smart controller on the, the Mavic onto this stereo system that I've got in the car. And as you can see, that's working perfectly. They're following me up the road. I don't have to hold the controller in my hands. I can just glance down to my to the uh, stereo system there and I can see quite clearly that the, the drone is still following me, which I think is a, a really useful feature of this, uh, of this drone and the setup that we've got in here with the, with the radio and everything. So I thought that might be useful for you guys. Um, I've done this using a fire stick and I'm basically just mirroring to the fire stick uh, from the thing. So I'm going to pull over here, guys. We'll get back to you in a minute. I'll drop this down, the drone, and we'll take it from there. See you in a bit. Hi, guys. Just a quick update. There's a couple of little extra things I wanted to show you on the car that I forgot to mention in the previous parts of the video. So if you'd like to have a look at this, this is the stereo. There was a useful little app that I got. It's called Kapang. And with that, you can get live TV uh, stations, just live free view channels. As you can see, all the channels are there. This is an absolutely great app. It's free um, and you can get all the free view channels at least, which is like, you know, like your Range Rover almost. You've got your, your, your free view TV in the car. I'll just show you one there, BBC just click it on there and then as you can see pops straight into live TV which is a, a great thing come back out of that uh, the other thing I wanted to quickly show you was the reversing camera that I fitted to the car forgot to show you that as well so if you have a look just put the car into reverse uh, you'll see the image I know it's a bit up in the air but that's because my boot is up at the moment uh, which will take me on to the next thing I'm going to show you but as you can see, the camera's nice and clear, all works a treat. And then, you can just follow me round to the back, I'll show you the uh, subwoofer that we installed. Let's go. There go, guys. Subwoofer, all this and sub, nice and compact, nice and sturdy and a great sound out of that so yeah just wanted to add them a few things for you see you in a bit all right guys just wanted to give you a little summary really about the work that we carried out uh, you've seen the rest of the video by now all the installation everything that we've done i just wanted to give you a little bit of a rundown on what it cost and i mean it, as usual with me it's a fortune but um so I'll just break it down for you a little bit. The stereo was around about £750 for the stereo itself. Um, then there was the uh, uni kit, which made it a floating panel. That was another £150. Um, then there was the subwoofer. That was about £500. I know that's a lot of money, but that subwoofer, that Audison subwoofer, is a cracking piece of kit. I re highly recommend that. It's a cracking piece of kit. A really good quality subwoofer. Uh, the camera, the, that was a NCB8, I think, the Pioneer one, so correct for the system. That was about £80 for the rear view camera. The wiring harness, now, and, and the DAB aerial and the other little bits of cables that I had to, had to buy a, a FACRA cable for the aerial on the back of the, on the, the for the FM aerial on the back of the the system all of that came to about 350 pounds now i know that sounds like a lot of money and it is a lot of money really but a part of that is because of the system the harman kardon system that's in the car which you'll find if you're driving range rovers as well same thing they've got the fiber optic uh, system in there which means you need a decoder box uh, to to run your fiber optics into so that it can be decoded and sent to the 
to the car's original amplifier to get any noise so that's why that was quite expensive and if you were thinking about doing this to a Range Rover or similar you're going to expect to pay that kind of money for one of these harnesses that um, has that in there um, what else did we have? We had the Wi-Fi hotspot as well. That was another 150 quid, but that's optional. I mean, you could run it off your mobile phone, but we just wanted a more permanent fix, something that we can just leave in the car and uh, and leave it there. And the last thing was the fire stick, obviously, 30 quid or whatever they are from Amazon. So all told, it comes to 2,010 pounds, more or less. Uh, so quite a bit of money but quite a worthwhile system and and I thought you'd be interested to see it maybe not for a Mercedes but maybe for any car that you've got somebody might be interested in in that system for for their car and at least it gives you a little bit of an insight into the workings of that I hope you've enjoyed the video if you have any questions guys please just drop me a line put it in the comments box I'll, I'll do my best to answer any questions that you that you send over um, as always it's been a pleasure I hope you're all keeping well. And um, oh, another quick mention as well. You may have noticed, those of you who are keen-eyed may have noticed that we changed the name of the channel to Jim's Motoring Mayhem. And the reason for that, obviously, is because I don't actually, at this point in time, own a Range Rover. So it's a little unfair to label the channel as uh, Jim's L322 Range Rover Diaries when I don't actually have that car anymore. Although I do have some more Range Rover content that I do plan to put up on the on the channel but I've kind of because it's been a mixture of different cars that we've got over this period because our new car fell through um, I've changed the name of the channel so but I would really appreciate it if you haven't already please subscribe and uh, try and get the numbers up a little bit and um, yeah, it would be great It'd be great to continue doing this obviously I don't make any money doing this but I enjoy doing them and, and if you enjoy it give it a like and give us a subscribe it'd be really very much appreciated um that's it guys we'll wrap it up there um as always it's been a pleasure and we'll see you in the next one take care